Hey, welcome to part three of our uh, sci-fi uh, sci-fi guide tutorial. So in this video, um, let's just continue. So in our last video, we uh, added more detail to the uh, head of the character and the body, right? And um, that is uh, where we left off. One thing I would like to do is actually add some kind of a connection between this huge body and his uh, head with a couple chords, right? So um, I was experimenting with that and it looked pretty cool. So let's uh, let's do that. So um, if you wanna follow along, select your body layer, right? And if you go to your brushes and press um, I, one of the things that we have, uh, part of ZBrush, is something called this, this uh, IMM machine parts. So if you just simply select that, um, you will see it on the top um, you'll have all these options. And by the way, you can al al always press M and that's gonna give you a different view. If you wanna, instead of scrolling all these, maybe you wanna just press M and, you know, see what your options are, right? Uh, just an easier way to see it. But let's say I want to make a connection between his head and um, the body, right? Let's uh, create a couple hose coming down. So I'm thinking about even taking something Kind of like this actually. Uh, I think that's pretty awesome piece. So I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna make sure my active symmetry is on. And let's just drag something right on his back. And what I wanna do is I wanna create a cord coming out from his back and plugging into his head. It's kind of comical, but uh, just over the top. Uh, now, uh, one thing I wanna point out, as you're dragging this IMM brush into the, uh, into the body, right? you can control the depth of it. And I have my depth actually dragged out and that's gonna be uh, this little depth uh, controller is gonna be in brushes and then depth. So if you go to brush, you can uh, scroll down, there it is. So there's depth, if you open that up, you can see this little guy. Now this is really powerful. I have it dragged out on my um, UI here cause I use it all the time, right? So you can control how deep something gets inserted with the IMM brushes. So if I want it, uh, maybe I think this is a little too much, right? I can control this dot and let's say I go light, right above the line, which is the surface. And now uh, what I could do is I can, let me undo my last move, right? And let's just create another one. So I'm just gonna do something like this, all right? And in this case, you know, maybe it's not rotated exactly as I want. I can always go to rotate and I can always manually kind of adjust this, right? If I wanted to, maybe I wanna uh, create something like this and I'm pretty happy with that, right? So, uh, you know, do something similar, pick the piece that you like and uh, let's do that. And once you do uh, insert it and you're happy with it, let's just split it into something, a different layer. So I'm gonna say split and I'm gonna say split on mask and that's gonna give me yet another layer. So now this is by itself, right? And what I would like to do next is I wanna create some kind of, a, just like we did with the eye, Let's create some sort of a connection between the body and this metal uh, insertion, uh, this metal piece that we just did. So I'm gonna go to the body. Let me grab uh, my, I'm just gonna grab my inflate, make sure uh, active symmetry is on. And let's just uh, create some kind of a connection here, right? So it looks like the flesh actually was, you know, kind of drilled into, right? So we'll do something like that. And we probably don't want to have all of these to be exactly the same size, right? So I'll do something like that, create some kind of a deformation there. And um, if you needed uh, more resolution, you can also also um, turn this into a Dynamesh and just crank this up. I'm currently working with 400, I'm under 500,000. So, um, but you can see that it starts to look a little, um, low res so you know i can always do of course control d and that's going to take me to 2 million and um that will also get rid of that low res uh, state right which maybe i kind of need at this point let me grab something like the damien standard and let's just create a few uh, details here as well We can also grab our trim dynamic and maybe flatten some of this or just kind of distort it a little, right? So it's not a perfect blobs. Uh, you can always do that. All right, and I don't mind uh, having symmetry on this because this is, you know, it's somewhat far apart and for the sake of speed, I think it's fine. All right, so once we create some kind of a connection, 
uh, there. Let's go ahead and run a tube from this piece into his head, right? So to do that, we obviously need a couple uh, pieces on the head as well, right? So let me, uh, let's go to our head and let's go to geometry and take a look and see what uh, is going on here. Currently, uh, we have five subdivision levels, right? So we do need to freeze this in order to insert um, additional plates to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and say free subdivision levels. Um, let me go to my brushes, let's press I, and let's just select the pieces that we want to insert uh, into the head and maybe, how about I'll just use this one here. I'm gonna turn my uh, symmetry on and just make, put two of them, right? So I think that uh, that would totally work. Go to move and we can adjust the position of it if we wanted to. Okay, very cool. Let's go ahead and split it. So I'm gonna say um, under sub tools, I'm gonna say split on mast, right? That's gonna put it in its own layer. And that is gonna be uh, great because now we can go back into the head. And let's go ahead and go to geometry and turn off free subdivision levels. All right, so that's gonna bump us back to level five. Um, it's currently masked, right? You can see that it's, it's dark. So if I do control and drag, that's gonna unmask it. And now the cool thing about all of this is that now we have these two pieces moved into the head, right? And um, we can, of course, select them and we can do anything we want with these, right? Um, we can add, uh, do some Z model or magic, do some work on it if you want. Uh, it's up to you. Maybe it would be kind of cool if the base of it was a little bit wider, right? How can we do that? Let's do that. So I'm going to go to draw, pick Z modeler. Let's turn on our polyframe and let's just uh, make our brush a little bit smaller. I am still in active symmetry, but if I wanted to expand this edge out, this whole uh, loop, right? How do I do that? Well, I can uh, hover over this and I can go to, uh, let's go to poly group and let's do a poly loop, right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply, let's find our orange line and just uh, tap on it. And that's gonna select, that's gonna give us a different color for our poly loop, which means we can go to Q mesh, we can go to um, poly group all, and let's just simply literally just pull this out. And that is gonna give us this really awesome kind of a base uh, connector, right? And um, I think that's is exactly what I was looking for, right? So instead of just having a, Kind of a skinny tube you have kind of something like this where it looks like it's part of the head right uh, i'm going to select my head turn off my polyframe and in here let's just do the same thing i'm going to grab my you can grab any one of these inflate uh, clay build up and let's just do the same thing let's just create a little detail that looks like it's overlapping right the skin is kind of hugging the uh, the metal piece and i'm going to attempt to make them somewhat different uh, scale, right? I'm just going to go around and just literally make them a little bit uneven and just do something like that. All right, let's go ahead and zoom out and see if we like that. Um, I like actually like this better than this one. I'm going to hold on the old key, select the body. And you know what? I'm just going to see if I can change this a little too. That's a little bit better, right? Let's go ahead and uh, next create the uh, cables running from this piece to this piece. How do we do that? How do we create some cables? Uh, to do this, I'm going to go into my side view. Let's uh, make sure that we have our uh, piece selected, which is going to be this one, right? And uh, what I want to do is I want to go to my brushes and let's press I and let's just select this uh, insert cylinder brush so let's click on that and that's going to give us these cool looking sci-fi hose right and i think that's pretty perfect for uh, what i'm trying to do all right so next uh, let's go ahead and create the tube i'm going to jump out of my perspective mode hold on the shift key i'm just going to snap in the side view and um, now what i'm going to do is i'm going to start um, i'm going to create a simple curve just something like this going from this piece to this piece i have my active symmetry on so i know there's two of them right and uh, if you wanted to make it longer you can just uh, find the end and just keep going so you can do it that way you can also press the s key and change the size of the hose maybe if you want it smaller right you can just make the brush smaller and just simply tap and uh, that's gonna take care of that 
if you wanted to, uh, let's go ahead and align this a little bit better. I'm going to Alright you guys, so it's a little bit of a fight, but once you get them in there um, aligned, right, you can press on um, any part of the mesh to bake it, so get rid of those uh, curves, and now you can see the curves are gone. If we go into split and do split on mast, we can put the uh, tubes or the hose on their own layer, right? And now uh, what we can do is we can just simply grab the move brush, and um, what we can do is we can just make small um, final adjustments, right? So. Uh, literally just kind of push them around as you like right just kind of make um, maybe a better connection on both ends and that's going to give you a little more precision um, as far as the alignment goes right if I want to make these just a little bit larger right I can always do that I can grab something like let's just do inflate and maybe I want to inflate the ends a little more so it looks like it's kind of connecting to that piece in there all right, so that bottom one is gonna be just a little bit larger. And uh, same thing with this as well. I can grab my move. I can make it kind of large and I can just shimmy this around and just make sure that it um, aligns uh, with what I like, right? And uh, same thing, honestly, I would love the bottom piece to be a little bit larger. So I'm gonna grab my inflate and I'm just gonna inflate the bottom to have a little better, uh, better connection there. If I wanted to rotate around the model, I can go outside in these borders and then that's going to give me more control as far as the uh, rotation goes, right? I can spin around. Very cool. So now we have these kind of custom connectors uh, that look like they plug right in, in there, right? All right. So that's pretty cool. So now we have these uh, crazy looking cords. I can always, uh, of course, adjust them still, right? Maybe I want them a little bit lower. Let's go ahead and also create some detail in the chest. I'm press Alt and select uh, the body. Go back into my IMM brushes. Let me just grab something like, doesn't really matter, but maybe uh, just even this piece here is fine. Uh, press the X and let me just put this on both sides. Now it's telling me that um, I have subdivision levels on my body, right? So be mindful of that. I can just delete lower. I don't really need uh, the lower anymore. And let me just insert some kind of a detail here. All right, let's go ahead and split this as well. I'm gonna go to my sub tools. I'm gonna go to split and do split on mast. And that's gonna give uh, me a new layer. And I can just continue and keep going and add more and more, uh, you know, cool sci-fi stuff into this, into his body. But I think uh, to um, to move along, let's go ahead and kind of focus on these gloves, right? So I'm gonna select my glove and let me turn on my uh, polyframe and take a look and see uh, what we have here. Now to isolate it, remember we can do, um, by the way, uh, definitely save. Let's go ahead and do save. Uh, to isolate, just hold on the shift key and you can see how I'm starting to get a lot of sub tools here, right? So um, I'm going to isolate it by holding down the shift key and just clicking on this eye. And that's going to give me just this piece alone. I can also press F to zoom in and maybe have a better look. Let's go ahead and go to geometry and see what's going on here. So currently it's subdivided. I'm actually going to delete uh, higher. And this is what we have, right? So uh, to move forward with this, I think uh, let's do a couple things. One uh, thing I would like to do is I definitely I want to close this hole. How do we close holes in ZBrush? Um, we can go to Modify uh, Topology under uh, Geometry. And in here, there's something called uh, Close Holes, right? If I click on that, you can see ZBrush will automatically uh, close that opening for me. And now what I could do is to um, get the topology looking a little bit nicer and give us a chance to maybe play around with um, Z model or let's Z remesh this. So let's go ahead and find under geometry, let's find Z remesher. Um, the current count for this, you can see is 1500 points. I'm going to change it. I'm going to change mine to one and I'm going to turn adapt off. So I don't have anything selected. Now I could say detect edges if I want to maintain some of these edges here, right? But um, I'm just going to say one, my active symmetry is off. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply say uh, Z remesher. All right, and that's gonna give me a really nice, clean looking um, shape which is uh, much better because it has a better topology up here, right, running along. And uh, I'm pretty happy with this. And you can see, because I had I said detect edges, uh, it also creased this edge, right? And you can see that right there. It's, it has all this, uh, it has a crease running along to make the edge uh, sharp. If you have any touch-ups, make your brush kind of small, holding on the shift key, you can just maybe smooth some of this uh, if you need to, but, um, I'm pretty happy with this. I think by default, just literally just pressing it one time, it's giving us something really cool and it's gonna give us a lot of control, right? So this is gonna be our kind of a low poly uh, version of the hand. Now, uh, let's go ahead and maybe create some additional uh, elements. Now, one of the things I do wanna make sure is that it is kind of nice and straight. So just maybe, you know, make sure that on your end, Yours looks kind of nice and, and clean because this is going to be our base mesh, right? So we want to make sure that this is nice, okay? You don't have any kind of, you know, weird stuff poking out or anything weird, right? It's kind of sort of looking nice and clean. Now, uh, let's add some detail to this using uh, Z Modeler, right? So one of the things we could do is maybe, uh, you know, we could, for example, let's go ahead and bevel this sharp edge, right? So to do this, I'm going to go to Z Modeler. I'm going to hover over the edge, press space bar, go to bevel, and I'm going to say edge loop complete, and I'm just going to bevel this whole thing right here. And I think that's going to be a little bit nicer instead of having a super sharp uh, corner there, right? I kind of like this. Um, it's up to you if you like this as well. Next, uh, let's go ahead and maybe create kind of a thin line along this edge as well. I'm going to hover over this edge, and let's do... Let's do another bevel, but this time we'll do it nice and uh, thin. So we'll do something like this. Now, if we hover over that and go to Q Mesh Poly Group All, right? Attempt to uh, press this in. Uh, if you start pressing it in and you start seeing this really strange, uh, strange uh, effect, um, that just means that Q Mesh is not what we want to use, right? It, it, uh, Q Mesh has all this. Um, extra stuff which is going to have uh you know snapping and and uh attraction all of that um i want to do something super simple all i want to do is i just want to push this in without any kind of a fancy tools so for that instead of using q mesh um let's switch it to uh extrude right so extrude is going to be clean and simple it's just going to push the faces without any kind of uh, extra stuff so i'm going to say polygroup all and let me just attempt to push this in. So I'm gonna push it in about this much. So then I have a kind of a nice line uh, going around, right? So we're just creating kind of a interesting detail for our glove. And if you wanted to see what that might look like um, once it's subdivided, uh, let's jump out of polyframe. Let's go to uh, geometry and under dynamic subdivision, let's turn this on. And it's currently set to two. Right, we can set it to three, and we can see what that looks like. So, um, we're, cre we're creating a few uh, cool things. One, we closed the cap, so now it's closed, and now we have this really cool border, which uh, is currently not even creased, so it doesn't look that good. Let's go ahead and crease this edge here, right? I'm going to hover over this, and uh, let's go ahead and do uh, crease, edge loop complete, and I do want to make sure that I'm holding this crease, so I'm going to hold this. And I do want this one, and this one, and this one, right? I, I like all of those, right? All of those corners. And you know what? I even like this one. So now uh, if I turn my polyframe on, you can see which ones I creased, right? And also if I turn my dynamic, you can see what that looks like. Now we have this really sharp looking um, shape, right? Instead of kind of a blobby, weird looking stuff. So that's super helpful. So keep in mind, you can always click dynamic for a quick preview and see uh, what that actually looks like, right? Uh, very cool, let's just keep going. So uh, let's see, what else can we do to this uh, awesome looking glove? One of the things I would like to do is I would like to create this hand instead of making it look um, so simple. 
let's create some interesting details uh, on the fingers and the thumb, right? So how do we do that? Let's hover over the um, face and I'm gonna go to poly group. Uh, it's still on poly loop and let me just select maybe this and this. Some more detail here and so the pinky and the thumb are just going to have like this uh, one strip and then these three fingers are going to have double right so now what we could do is let's go into uh extrude let's do polygroup all and let's just push let's just push this in and by pushing it in we're going to create more of a kind of a sci-fi robotic look i think which is kind of cool I like that and uh, let's take a look and see. All right, so if you wanted to, if you think uh, maybe your fingers start to look kind of weak, uh, make sure you can always inflate it just a little more, right? Uh, that's perfectly fine. And again, this is gonna be located under tool uh, deformation. So you can make sure, kind of maintain your fingers nice and uh, somewhat thick, right? Let's go ahead and start playing around with more with more cool uh, details, let's just select, um, I'm gonna hover over this and I'm gonna go to poly group. And if I press the old key, I can uh, select a few of these faces. And maybe I wanna do something like this. I'm gonna select all of these faces. And now, um, how would I turn this into a uh, circle, right? I have, I have this poly group selection, but I want it to be, um, a circle instead of a square. So to do that, I can go to Lightbox. I can go to Brush. Let's go into Smooth. Let's click on something called Smooth Groups. So I'm gonna select that. And it's gonna say that to use it, you have to press Shift key and then click. I'm gonna say OK. And now uh, if I make my brush a little bit larger and hold on the Shift key, you can see that my normal smooth is now switched to something called Smooth Groups which is gonna allow me to uh, smooth this and turn it into something that maybe resembles a circle, right? So I'm gonna do that. And if this is a little too strong for you, holding down the shift key, you can adjust the Z intensity, right? So we could do that. And we can just very carefully turn this into something that's a little more uh, round. So that's pretty cool. Uh, now we can hold down uh, let's go into QMesh, Polygroup All. Let's take this whole thing and just push it in. And now we've kind of created this really cool opening. I'm going to hover over this edge. I'm going to go to Bevel, and I'm going to bevel this edge. Holding on the Shift key, I can smooth this out and just make sure um, it looks nice. All right, if I wanted to, I can grab my Move Brush and maybe also adjust some of this. Maybe I wanna make it larger or smaller, but in this case, I feel like a little bit larger would be nicer. And I'm just kind of maintaining my kind of round shape here. All right, let's see what else can we do. So maybe uh, we want to raise some of these blocks. I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and I'm gonna make a selection. So I'm gonna grab uh, these eight, hover over my um, Selection, I'm gonna to go to key mesh polygroup all. I'm gonna move this up. And let's just raise this up a little more. So we're just gonna give ourselves uh, some detail. We can push it in or push it up. I'm just gonna push mine up. Let's hover over the edge, go to bevel, and let's just maybe bevel this. Next, let's hover over these. I'm gonna press Alt and just make my selection one more time. All right, and then let's go to inset. Let's do single poly, um, insert each poly. And now if we start insetting this, you can see that we can create this really awesome detail inside that little panel. So we'll do something like that. Switch it back to Q mesh and let's just do poly group all. And let's just simply push this in as well. And now we have something like that. Maybe he has like a little remote control or something on his hand, on his arm. If we wanted to preview that, let's jump out of uh, Q mesh. Um, let's go to geometry. And in here, let's go ahead and click Grease Polygroup. So I'm gonna click on this button here. And now if I go into uh, Dynamic Subdivision and press Dynamic Subdivide, you can see what that looks like. So now we're just created this kind of a fun little uh, detail on our uh, glove, right? Now at this point, let's do this. Let's uh, actually jump out of Dynamic 
and um, if I look at my geometry, uh, I don't have any subdivision levels, but let's say we want to create some kind of maybe chisel lines on this glove as well, right? So what I could do is I can just press Control uh, D, and we can subdivide this a few times. I'm going to go to like level six, and let's grab something like the uh, chisel brush. And the cool th thing about the chisel brush, I have it set to this uh, brush tip number one. You can see that I'm set to subtract. My Z intensity is at 60. And mm -hmm. I do have lazy mouse turned on. So now if I start to uh, drag, you can see that I can create these cool little uh, panel lines along the, uh, around the glove. So that's a cool way to uh, quickly add extra detail as well, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Um, now, one thing I wanna point out, if you start dragging something and then you stop and then you go back, uh, you're gonna have this really strange connection usually, right? If I go back, you can see I'm creating kind of these strange dots. Now, what if I don't like those? How do you how do you um, fix this? What you can do is you can go to something called Morph Target. And if you go into Morph Target and you say Store Morph Target or Store MT, right? And then try to draw this uh, line again. You can see that uh, if I stop and then I go back to the same spot, it's not going to uh, go too deep, right? It's gonna make a much better connection. All right, so let's make sure we use this. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo, and let's just start creating some uh, cool details using the chisel brush, right? So uh, let's just start, I'm gonna start um, drawing something that maybe looks pretty cool. Let's go ahead and maybe connect these lines. Right, just be uh, just be unique and creative, and uh, let's see what else can we do. Maybe we can add some lines here. All right, so we can keep doing that. Or uh, another thing we can do is we can go to like standard brush, select drag rectangular, and we can insert um, any one of these shapes. Right, if I wanted to do some circles, let me just do something like this alpha fourteen. I can switch it to add maybe, and let me just start dragging some shapes. We could draw some shapes, so maybe I can drag something here. Maybe there's a, maybe it's a big button or something, right? Let's try something called drag dot. And drag dot is fine because that's gonna give you exactly the same size dots. So let's go around and maybe insert some of those. All right. If I wanted to uh, soften some of the some of these chisel lines, I can always do a little bit of a uh, maybe a little polish. I'll just do like a one, and that's going to soften that up. If you like that, right? If I wanted to insert something, you can always go to IMM and let's go into IMM Modeling Kit. If you press on that, um, this has a lot of cool stuff. For example, let's grab this guy here or something like this even. And remember, we can press M to uh, preview all the available pieces. And all of these are um, would totally work for what we're doing. I even like some of this stuff, some of these vents, right? Uh, let's grab maybe, let's grab this guy and let's see if we can insert uh, this somewhere on our glove. So it's not going to let us right now because we need to freeze our uh, subdivision level. So let's go to geometry and let's do a freeze. And let's go ahead and just insert something uh, that we like, maybe something like this. All right, so I think that's pretty cool. And uh, you get the idea. So next, let's do this. Let's turn on the polyframe and we can see um, what's happening here, right? So we have all these different uh, pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on auto groups and what auto groups is going to allow me to do is it's going to um, unify the glove um, and separate it from all the other pieces. And the reason I want to do that is because remember um, we froze our subdivision levels for our glove, but I would like to separate all these other pieces. So now what I could do is I can do control shift and click 
to hide uh, all the pieces and then what I could do is I can go to split and I can say split hidden and that's going to put them on separate layer right and the cool thing about that is that now if we um, go back to uh, this glove layer and go to uh, geometry we can go ahead and unfreeze it right so I'm going to click freeze subdivision to unfreeze it and that's going to rebuild our subdivision levels okay so we got back all of that uh, detail let's turn off our um, polyframe we can do uh, control and drag to unmask it and then uh, we're still on level six right now uh, let's turn everything back on and see how this is looking so i'm going to go to sub tools um, i have a lot of sub tools now i'm going to hold down shift key and click on this i to bring everything back and let's just see uh, if we like how this is looking right i think it's look it looks pretty good now i definitely don't want to see this one anymore um, that's kind of uh, old and outdated. Let me hide that for a minute, right? The one thing that you'll notice, obviously, is that I need to touch touch up some of this volume here. So the easiest way to do that is obviously uh, to adjust the body, right? So I'm gonna click on the body. Let me grab my move, make it kind of large. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move some of these uh, pieces in so I can see the detail that we did, right? So I wanna make sure um, I'm going to stay clear from kind of the edges or the corners, right? So I'm going to go around and just very carefully adjust my body to, uh, to kind of fit inside that, that new glove that we just made, right? And now uh, to copy it over, right? What I need to do is I'm going to select the, uh, these pieces and I'm just going to do, let's go ahead and do uh, duplicate and uh, mirror. That's going to copy those. And now I need my glove, so I'm going to click on my... Um, you know what I'm gonna delete this other glove I don't need it and I'm gonna click on this high res one and I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it and I'm gonna to go to geometry delete uh, lower I'm gonna move it over by mirroring it and then what I need to do is I need to go back and do reconstruct subdiv right to get my levels back and I'm gonna press this uh, five times right because there's six levels so let's go ahead and make sure that that's the case. And we have all of our uh, detail there. That's great. And uh, now let's go ahead and uh, take a look and see where we're at, right? So uh, in this video, we ended up doing uh, those cool hose on top. We added a um, pretty uh, sweet looking glove. And of course you can add uh, a lot more detail. And I might actually go in and add a little more chiseling inside, just maybe add a couple more panels. but. I think our character is coming along uh, nicely. One other thing that I'm going to suggest is make sure you uh, save your work. And also, um, if you want to preview the uh, model um, with different materials, it's always a good idea so you can see what that looks like. I'm going to switch it to bump. All right, we can also come to our lights, maybe turn that cool blue light we had on. So thank you so much for joining me today. I uh, hope you are... Uh, having fun with your character and I will see you guys in our next video.